Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts. When you stand and walk to this stage, you are walking into your destiny, your future, your calling, your purpose, your giftings. Stand up, girl. This is your moment. Walk to the stage. It is not by DNA. It is not by birth order. It is not by favoritism or nepotism. If I did not know that the hand of the Lord was on you, I would never do this. As Samuel's horn of oil anointed David, I so anoint you. And with every drop of oil that falls upon your head, may the strength and the power of the Almighty God rest upon you. Rest upon your life. Rest upon your life. Rest upon your life. I want every woman in this room to lift up your hands and receive the anointing of God. I do feel like there are some members of the delegation in the building because got my girls with me. My girls are here. Woman Evolve, I love you. Thank you so much. Hey, you heard this? You heard what she said? Girl power. Women evolving. Okay, she's conveying girl power. The scriptures is very clear that the woman and Esau are the weaker vessels, but I'll get to that later. But they are the least qualified to teach, not because the color of their skin or simply because she's a woman, but the sin that is in them. Okay. Perpetual nature of Eve. She wanted to be like God. She chose an allegiance with the serpent. And to this day, she pays the penalty for that. That's what these polygynists don't understand. They say monogamy is a failure because of how many single mothers are out here. But they don't address why the woman divorces 80% of the time. And this is a derivative of the curse that is on her to this day. Okay, did God reward her with more men to marry? No. Her having to compete with other women for one man is intentional by the Most High to fragment the ego of the woman, to kill that Jezebel spirit. Okay? The woman does not belong behind a pulpit. I'm sorry. She belongs in the kitchen cooking for her husband. And if she don't have a husband, she needs to fast and pray to Yah for understanding and listen to the man of God teach. A woman is not to wear pants, makeup, and array or convey herself as a harlot. She is to be a caretaker at home and to keep silent in the church. Period. You really like, you know, not a sorority because, you know, renouncing the letters and all those things. But Woman Evolve just has a thing going on. And I thank you all for not leaving me anywhere by myself, for growing, evolving, establishing yourselves. And many evolve, we hear you. We know you want in too. So many evolve, just go and go get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> See, this is one of the reasons why Esau would be judged so harshly by the Most High. He is so determined to exhaust his resources to keep black men under him that it is he who sponsors the Jezebel spirit in so many ways. It is Esau who invented pornography and child support. Remember in Romans 1, the Apostle Paul said they are inventors of evil things. And the woman by nature submits to the power structure, even if it is satanic. This is why she is not to teach. She will always compromise the word of Yah because of her emotions. So when Yah says he hates Esau, he doesn't understand the judgments written in Revelation, 2nd Estrus. Obadiah, Joel, Isaiah, Malachi, and Jeremiah. Some may ask, how did Esau get over Jacob? Well, that was an act of God, because our forefathers foolishly said they want Christ's blood on their hands and on the hands of their children. 
but it will also be an act of God to remove Esau in this kingdom and this dispensation. And Esau will never, ever reign over anything again. If he repents, he will be welcomed into the kingdom as servants and handmaidens. All right. If he don't, then he's going straight to the lake of fire where he will burn day and night with the rest of those demon possessed slave masters. You got to read your Bible again. If you don't like that, take it up with the most high. Because the so-called white man has worked crafty counsel to ensure that the black woman has all these safety nets. Remember, Satan appears as an angel of light. He conceals himself in safety when imminent danger lurks. 1 Thessalonians 5.3 says, When they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. It's called the sting of death. You may ask, well, why would God make all of Esau servants in the kingdom? Well, why do men, all men, have to return back to the dust for one sin that Adam committed? Again, read your Bible. Study generational curses. All right? That is how sin is imputed. Now, you heard this Jezebel, Sarah Jakes, talk about evolving and all of this witchcraft. See, that's how Satan opens doors with all types of covenants through sororities and fraternities. I mean, how do you think Jakes, T.D. Jakes, how do you think he got this big? He didn't get that big from serving the Most High. He sold his soul. I will come up to the school and like get real unwoman evolved. It'd be woman dissolved if I got to come up to the <laughs> Do you understand? It will be woman dissolved if I have to come up to that school. And uh, almost towards the end of her eighth grade year, I was starting to feel like I may have to dissolve a little bit. And so uh, she was doing okay, but in her social studies class, they started talking about racism and stereotypes. And I think under normal circumstances, this would not have been as challenging, but the reality that she was the only girl in the class, and also one of the only blacks in the entire student body, it made her uncomfortable. So we have a conversation with her teacher about her feeling uncomfortable because of the conversations. And really, it wasn't necessarily to change the entire curriculum as much as it was to help him understand some of the nuances connected to her identity in a school where she is marginalized. For those of you who understand the concept of intersectionality, though, this is not foreign. Intersectionality was a, co a term coined by Kimberly Williams Crenshaw in 1989. I want to read you the definition that she wrote when defining this work. She says, intersectionality is a metaphor for understanding the ways that multiple forms of inequality or disadvantage sometimes compound themselves and create obstacles that often are not understood among conventional ways of thinking. We'll notice that before DEI programs were under attack, that intersectionality was a conversation that many companies were having as a part of their organization. It's because it was important that we recognize that we don't just want to talk about pay inequality between men and women. We also have to consider the pay inequality between white women and black women. See, this is the new age doctrine that is being taught in the mega churches and the universities, which I have attended. OK, this matriarchal kingdom sanctioned by the weaker vessels and tailor made for the matrix, which is strong delusion from the serpent, because in patriarchal archaic kingdoms or even in a grid down situation the woman is the weaker vessel okay she can't chop wood and gather and hunt like the man can that's not the way the most high made her okay and then those type of kingdoms and societies there's no talk about equal pay all right women have always relied on their seduction their beauty their outward appearance again being a vessel for that Jezebel spirit to use the authority of a man. And again, I'm not speaking about all women, right? Because there are some righteous women out there who fear the most high. Okay. But there's no feminism without the crafty counsel of wicked men. That's all I'm saying. Because they live in a marginalized intersection of their identity. Not only are they women, but they are also black women. They have two isms connected to them. Anytime there are multiple forms of marginalization, we experience what is called intersectionality. 
And while it is rooted in black feminist advocacy, the term intersectionality has included other forms of multiple isms. So if you are an older black man, then you are experiencing ages of in racism, hypothetically when going out for work or pursuing a new career. To be disabled and to be black is another form of intersectionality. So when we talk about intersectionality, we recognize that organizations become more diverse in the ideas that they create and the ways that they handle interpersonal development within their organization when they realize that not everyone is having the same experience. First Timothy 2.12 says, I suffer a woman not to teach nor to have authority over a man. Okay, then why is Sarah Jakes teaching? Okay, because T.D. Jakes is a false prophet. And she got the Jezebel spirit. Okay, so I'll list the scriptures in the description box, including 1 Timothy 2.12 and all the judgments that are written against Esau. All right? So you don't think I'm just talking out the side of my mouth. These feminists love to dance around the root problem, which is an ancient spirit of hatred conveyed by Esau. All right? He got to come up out of them houses, repent, and make reparations okay you want bible chapter and verse okay i'll give it to you okay i'm gonna look at luke chapter six these are the beatitudes okay we're gonna start at verse 20 and we're gonna read skip a little over and read verse 37 as well it says verse 20 then he christ lifted up his eyes toward his disciples and said Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Okay, there's scripture that says the sacrifices of God is a broken and contrite spirit. Okay, I had some guy come trying to argue with me about Bill Winston, that he's not a false prophet. Because he preaches about prosperity. I told him, first of all, nowhere in the scriptures in the New Testament does it say that a pastor is supposed to collect tithes. Okay, he's supposed to collect a tenth of your pay every week. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say that. The scriptures say a tenth, the tithe, was for the Levites under the old covenant because they didn't have an inheritance with the children of Israel. Matter of fact, the scriptures say, woe to you shepherds, you greedy dogs. Okay, this is the type of stuff it's talking about. Okay, sacrifices of God is a broken and contrite spirit. Okay, we saw this in the life of Christ himself, who had no place to lay his head. We saw this with the apostles. The apostle said, we, uh, apostle Paul said, we apostles were poorly clothed, we hunger, we thirst. And we are homeless. That's you look the look the scriptures up. Read your Bible instead of coming here arguing with me about what the word says. All right. Verse 22. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Verse 23. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For indeed, your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner, their fathers did to the prophets. Okay, the prophets were killed for the word of God. Okay, verse 24. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full, for you shall hunger. Woe to you who laugh now for you shall mourn and weep. Now, everybody at some point in their life laugh. Okay, so who's he talking about here? What, what, what's the deeper meaning of this verse here? Woe to you who laugh now. Who is laughing right now? Esau. Who's living in the fatness of the land now? Esau. Okay. He didn't pay reparations. It, everything he's got is stolen. All right, and I'll get to that in James chapter 5. So it's, this verse means what it literally means, talking this, and it's also talking about the rich. He who gains riches not by right. 
all right? His end shall be desolation. That's what the scriptures say, okay? So laughter is a metaphor for the, the so-called rich man, all right? The so-called rich man who inherit corrupt riches, and he practices evil to retain his riches. That's what King Solomon said. He said, ruthless men retain riches, all right? King Solomon, the richest man in the Bible, said, do not work hard to be rich, okay? Verse 26, woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers, the false prophets, the mega ministers, the ones who fat in their pockets, taking it from your paycheck. These people so dumb coming here defending a false prophet, talking about some well, he he's preaching the word of God. He's he's getting rich off of poor people, telling poor people who work at jobs every day, or even telling a lot of the people who are well well off. He's telling them if you sow a seed, you're gonna get rich. Not only he's saying you're gonna get rich, he's saying foolish stuff like you're gonna be rich in one day if you just have faith. That's a false gospel. We go down to verse 37 here. Now catch this. A lot of people use this scripture with minor things, like people who are just judging them because of their sin, the sin that they're not living in, and they're removing the speck out of their eye because the beam is removed from their eye. They use this. They don't use it with bigger matters, okay, like the men who get life in prison but petty crimes, just all types of stuff that Esau judges and gives the so-called black men more time for the same crimes that other races of men commit. Verse 37, judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Okay, you have to understand the weight of sin the incredible cost of sin, not just from an individual standpoint, an uh, individual who practice sin, but the generational curses of sin that passes down to the children and the children's children. All right? The so-called white man is over the criminal prosecution, the judicial system, the prison industrial complex. They make millions of dollars off of them bodies being filled up in prison, okay? And I can go on and on and on, but I don't have time to get too deep into that. I'm going to go to James chapter 5. I'm going to close with this. For you people who don't read your Bible, you're lazy. You're very lazy. I can see it in your comments. When people come with comments like that, I already know they ain't read none of these scriptures. Either that or they, they dull of hearing. Like the scriptures say, they got a spirit of stupid on them. Okay, James chapter 5. We're going to read James chapter 5, 1 through 6. It says, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten. There you go. That's why Christ told the rich young ruler, it's exceedingly difficult for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God. Then you get people come and say, well, you want to be broke, you be broke. Do you understand how much time it takes to go home through these scriptures? Okay, whatever personal goals that you have to make a certain amount of money, you're going to sacrifice that. Now, I have a full-time job. I do well, okay? I'm not rich, okay, but I take care of myself. But this here is talking about those who practice but steal from other people. It's a lazy spirit. Okay, they're looking for quick riches and Satan used them to come up with many schemes to steal from people. Put people in slavery and don't pay them for their wages. And they sit in, in the fatness of the land with their lazy asses. Yeah, I said it. Their, this verse 2 says, Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Verse 3 your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. So when they go to the lake of fire, they're going to have gold melting in their mouths and their eyeballs 
melting their flesh away. Their flesh going to grow back, burning their skin a lot. The, the money is literally going to burn they, like fire. It's going to be a mockery. All right. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Verse four. Indeed, the wages of the labors who mold your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. You see that? That's talking about the transatlantic slave trade, okay, which is, which is perpetuated to this day. Okay, the debt is outstanding. The Most High comes back and Esau has not paid this debt, which the scriptures prophesy that he will not. Okay, they're going to have to go into to slavery in the next kingdom. They have to do a thousand years of servitude. That's what the Bible say. All right. And the ones who don't repent, uh, Isaiah chapter 63, don't read Isaiah 63. It says nation and kingdom, which have not served you talking about the Gentiles, nation and kingdom, which have not served Jacob talking about the Gentiles having to serve Jacob nation and kingdom, which have not served you shall perish. Read Isaiah 63. Okay. Verse five here in James chapter five, verse five, you have lived on the earth in pleasure. Talking about the, the fatness of the land, the cul-de-sacs. Okay. They've lived in the quiet communities, sending their kids to soccer practice and baseball practice and pissing their dogs in the mouth. And then they come to look at you and Oh, you nigger. No, the devil is a liar. It says you have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the just. And he does not resist you. There you go. That's justice. They're going to go. They're going to bust hell wide open. The lake of fire. That's what Christ meant when he said it's, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because in Luke 6, 24, he said they already have their reward. You're looking at their reward that every day you go out. You're looking at it. All right. As I always say, don't let your flesh write checks. Your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. Do I become your enemy because I'm telling you the truth? This is written in the scriptures. Okay, and them dudes who build the seminary schools, they know this word. They know the judgment that's coming upon them. Okay, but their hearts are hardened. Okay, that's a demon of pride as well. All right, but that's all I got. Enjoy the rest of your day. God, rest upon you. Rest upon your life. Rest upon your life. Rest upon your life.